I'm Jack Talbert, and my informative speech today is going to be about Gordon Moore and Moore's Law and more than Moore technology. What is Moore's Law? That is key to the informative speech. A lot of people have kind of heard Moore's Law. They know a little bit about Moore's Law, but they don't necessarily know what Moore's Law is. I will tell you right now. I wrote it down, and I will tell you verbatim. Moore's Law is an axiom of microprocessor development stating that processing power doubles every 18 to 24 months without requiring an increase in the cost to manufacture or the overall size of the component package. Now this has been the fundamental law that governs computer development since 1965. That's when Moore came up with the axiom and wrote it in a paper, which was generally accepted in industry. What Moore's Law suggests is transistor size. The size of the transistors as transistors become smaller, and transistors are switches. Switches that have three prongs. It lets electricity pass between these two, those two, these two, or none of them. And in so doing, it allows a computer to make a decision. The transistor packages have gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. Right now, they're built at the atomic level. They're built to be eight carbon molecules wide in size, and they're actually etched on a template inside of a processor. So they actually build it as one piece, but they build the transistors into it, and they're very small. There are millions of them in an area less than the size of a standard postage stamp. Complementary metal oxide semiconductors, or what they refer to as silicon chips, that's what has made this a possibility, and it's something that Gordon Moore had predicted. If the airline industry followed the same principle of Moore's Law, nothing else in the world follows Moore's Law except computer construction. If the Boeing 747, from the time that it was first built until the current production model, were to follow Moore's Law, it would travel from Honolulu, Hawaii, to Seattle, Washington in five minutes. And it would do so with a weight of about 800 pounds, on the tarmac with no fuel in it. It would do it for approximately $5 per passenger and have a wall thickness of maybe two centimeters. And that's where the Boeing 787's production would be currently were it to follow Moore's Law. But nothing else in the universe does. What I would like to posit is that we need to go beyond Moore's Law. The problem is Moore's Law only goes so far and then you run out of universe. And right now, eight carbon molecules wide seems to be the end of the universe. If they try and go seven carbon molecules wide, the processors just burn up. Now, they can build things at the atomic level, one atom at a time. Gordon Moore, who was the co-founder of Intel, he hired people, well, not he personally, but his current namesake at Intel has hired people to... They physically take one atom at a time and they place it on a flat surface to build or construct what they need to build. By doing so, they can actually build a processor that interlocks molecules. They flip the charge of one molecule, it can affect eight others. Now instead of having just this decision, that decision, this decision, it can now make eight decisions with the same one electron movement and the power grows exponentially. The problem is the processors are now at a level where they're pretty much at the limit of the universe and they're beginning to build them at solely the atomic level and not necessarily worrying about etching away but putting the atoms in the places that they want. Stuff that feeds it. Your processor can be incredibly fast, but you have a touch screen on your phone. And from the time you touch it until the information gets to the processor, goes out, does the processing, comes back, all of that is slower than the processor. That's where more than more technology comes in. More than more says it goes beyond Gordon Moore's concept, beyond the Moore's law. More than more deals with nanotechnology, everything being built at the atomic level, not just the processors, using more exotic compounds that are not complementary metal oxide, but more of just straight carbon and building only with carbon atoms. Better, faster, smaller, 
in what they call discrete passive technology. And that is the components that go to feed the processor and leave out of the processor to return the information. Those have to catch up with the processor, and that's more than more technology. In conclusion, I would like to thank you for taking the time to learn about Gordon Moore, co-founder of the Intel Corporation, about his concept that every 18 to 24 months, computers double in speed and processing capability without necessarily doubling in cost. The cost remains the same or decreases proportionately. What that's led us to, the point at which we now can build things at the atomic level and looking forward into nanotechnology where the discrete passive components that feed the processors also have to become faster. I'm Jack Talbert. That's my informative speech. Thank you.